Welcome to episode number 21. My name is Harvey Newman and I like to share my passion for animation here in this channel with all of you. In this episode, I'm going to be covering something that has been highly requested since the very beginning of the channel, and that is for me to share some of my personal work with all of you. I've put together a small, quick show reel just to show you guys some of the projects that I worked on over the years. I haven't been able to cover all the projects, but hopefully it will give you guys a good idea. And also, I'll break down those projects and talk a little bit about what went on behind the scenes, how fun it was, and uh, how much it means to me to have worked on those projects. Hopefully, you'll find all these things as fascinating as I found working on those projects. I've been very blessed to work with some of the most talented people in the industry, and it's only right for me to share with you guys all of that stuff. So, let's get started with this episode number 21. So before I get started, I would like to give a huge shout out to some of the people out there that have been getting in touch with me, expressing to me how much this channel has been helping them, either making a decision to start animating, or to actually kind of plow through and continue to work hard behind closed doors because maybe they haven't had their break yet. So thank you very much to all of you that got in touch with me. Special thanks to Justin Roach and Antonio Guidetti. Those two got in touch with very inspiring messages. So thank you very much for that, guys. For everyone else, do feel free to get in touch via Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. I like to help out, so if you need any kind of advice, do reach out. So now that we got that out of the way, Let's get started with this episode. So the show reel that I'm going to show you guys is not going to be super polished. It doesn't really showcase all the work that I've done, just the latest stuff. If this proves successful and you guys want some more, then I can go back to older games and older projects and show you guys some of that. So in this show reel, you're going to find work from Fable Legends in Lionhead, from Horizon Zero Dawn that I worked in a VFX studio uh, called Access Animation. I'll also show you a work that I did freelance in this project called Darren Brown Ghost Project for Theme Park, pretty exciting. I'll also show you uh, some work that I did for Creative Assembly on Warhammer 2, and then ultimately the work that uh, I've done more recently on Battlefield and Battlefront for DICE. With all of that said, I'm pretty sure I've talked enough and you guys want to see the show reel, right? So let's get that show reel out of the way.
<laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. And now that we've got that out of the way, let me talk you through some of the stuff that I had to do in the project, how I felt, to give you guys a little behind the scenes about all this work that I've been doing over the years. So let's tackle that. And the first project on the pipeline is Fable Legends. So Fable Legends, unfortunately, as you guys must know if you play games, unfortunately was cancelled by Microsoft, but it was a project that was really beloved by everyone that was working on it. There was great ideas in the works, we worked really, really hard, and the game was in a great state before it was cancelled. So these things happen all the time in the games industry, so it's completely normal, but it's kind of a shame that people didn't get to play some of the stuff that we did. So on the showreel, as you see, right at the beginning, I start with this little creature, and there were the creatures of the forest and they were called nymphs and the premise that I had it was basically like the nymphs were tooth fairies and they were evil so what kind of things can I do with those so I had to come up with different concepts on how the nymphs would move and what kind of things they would do what kind of attacks they would have so the thing that I show you right at the beginning of the showreel is basically a loop of them flying and I thought to my personal taste having them moving their hands while they're idle would actually be really really nice and uh, it will make them a little bit more evil. Um, I also did a small piece when uh, Fable Legends was still about to come out uh, about the nymphs and some of the stuff that I had in my mind and I'll queue it up for you guys here. How to do it. We knew that it was like a homage to the Fable 1 character so we started looking at how to make her different, how to make her more original. I had two options. I could either make her very cute just like a butterfly or another flying character or I could make her very evil and I opted for the second option because of course that's much more fun. I had another character, there was an archer, and that was one of my first assignments when I got into the company. It was to actually make a hand key uh, stand up. So for me, because he has this big bow, it makes sense that he would use it as a crutch in order to stand up. I did quite a few other animations on Garrison as well. The only ones that I could find in my hard drive was this one. After that, you have the hero character that perhaps I worked on the most, and that was Stipple which was also announced on a YouTube video that we released in Lionhead. And Tipo was supposed to be this character that was slightly inhebriated and he could actually uh, fight much better when he was in this state. But the problem with Tipo was that he only had fists. And with his fists, obviously became a problem for animation because he could only punch. He didn't have any weapons to attack with. And every single other hero had weapons, which meant that he had to be much more up close which in animation is a bit of a problem because I had to find a way to make him readable from the distance that we had, which was a third person camera from really above and also at the same time make him punchy and make him like heavy and make him brawly and make sure that every single punch kind of carried some weight and also he had a sequence so I had to put the sequence in but in the end I think we pulled it off everyone started loving Tipple I started adding a little uh, flourishes here and there to, to the Tipple character his run cycle was kind of funny he used to run like this really fast for example people just kept saying Harvey push it more push it more Tipple is real fun so we did and it's one of those things that is exactly why I'm kind of sad that Lion Ahead is no longer around. Because Lion Ahead was definitely one of those studios that you could pull those things because they had a certain type of humor to them and they had a certain type of like just out of the box thinking to them. Uh, which was very British in its nature. I'm kind of sad that no longer around. I feel like the games industry lost a bit of a gem of a studio by not having a studio that actually kind of just does things slightly different than the rest. I learned a lot of that experience and it was the first time that I worked with Unreal Engine and I loved it. I think Unreal, out of all the engines that I work with, is the more um, animator friendly and I think it's very visual and putting assets on Unreal and making it work, it's super straightforward. I'll actually link here a video by James Lyons that he actually explains from an animated perspective how to actually kind of put assets on an Unreal Engine and make them run. And I hope you guys, just like me, find that stuff super fascinating. So go ahead and give it a click because James does a great job of explaining exactly how to actually make it all work. I 
after the Lion Head piece, you have the work that I've done for uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. So uh, this uh, was actually work that I did under a VFX studio up in Scotland called Axis Animation. We got pretty much like the, the first chunk of uh, the cutscenes. So when Alloy, the main character, is very tiny, she's a child and then grows up to be an adult. So we got that full sequence. I was brought up to the studio to be a lead animator and uh, basically I had to lead the team but I also had to animate. So this pieces here is the pieces that I animated or I helped heavily on the animation. Uh, we had uh, very few people to do quite a lot of work but I think overall the work speaks for itself. The game came out, was a huge success and we are really proud of what we achieved. I personally have learned a lot on Axis because it's a VFX studio that actually matches quality with quantity every single time. And everyone that works there is super incredibly talented and they work so, so fast. It's a valuable experience for anyone to go into a VFX studio because the amount of speed that you will gather after working in a VFX studio for a while, it's very, very beneficial no matter where you work. So I highly recommend that. So that was the work that I did at Axis. Darren Brown Ghost Train project. And this was something amazing to me. Uh, I worked for a company called Figment Productions uh, in Guildford in the UK. And I was working freelance from Scotland. And um, I loved my experience there. I was working with a fellow animator. He is incredibly talented, an animator by the name of Chris Deloitte. So Figment Productions had this premise that Darren Brown, which is an illusionist from the UK, wanted to open a train ride, one of the biggest theme parks in the UK. And it was supposed to be an illusion and something like nothing else ever seen. Um, and to me, it was only 20 meters, just me, myself and Chris Deloitte. Both of us were like, kind of salivating at the opportunity because the premise was pretty much like we have monsters, the monsters are wrecking a lot of stuff and everything is going to be hand key and it's going to be a VR project. And, um, and it was really cool because I never worked on VR before this project and it was going to be my first VR project. After all said and done, um, I actually went there myself to see it and it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. You just walk to this underground carriage and then you sit down, put your headset on, your VR headset just get, get immersed in this world that is decaying full of aliens and it's just things coming at you that scare you all the time but then to amp up the scale of the scare they actually had people in the carriage often touching your legs passing by and it just gave you this constant sense that something was going on in real life. So um, you never know about these things. Sometimes the projects don't come out as good as you thought, but in this case, it was pretty epic. And people are using the ride until this day. I believe it's still open in the UK. It's been a few years now, but the ride has been a success. So um, happy with that. freelancing my, my fiance got pregnant so we decided that it was time to be in a place that perhaps was a bit more stable because with freelancing you never know when your next gig is gonna come so creative assembly came knocking as soon as I got to creative assembly they were kind enough to give me a faction that was basically very much wanted by everyone which was the dinosaur faction uh, called the lizard man uh, in Warhammer in the board game and uh, basically uh, it was exciting because what happens uh, with Warhammer is that any faction that comes in in the board game uh, normally you know them or you see them as statues but no one really has seen them move before and they say this is a faction we are gonna make this 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 character and now you go and figure out how this character is gonna move. It was really exciting because it's creativity galore. They just give you a small premise and then you go to town and then you start kind of a talking with the team about should I go left or should I go right? The first dinosaur that you see in the shore wheel, uh, they call them the cold ones. And the cold ones is basically like a mix between a velociraptor and a small T-Rex. And uh, as you can see, they have like uh, longer arms than, than, than T-Rexes and their body is more chunky, they are more heavy. 
all of those things were uh, a challenge for me because when you look at the Velociraptors and then you actually start putting some of the animation on these guys, it looks completely off. Every single animal that I had to uh, animate, it was a case study that I had to do and it was very, very fun. The second dinosaur that you see then, it's actually called uh, the Carnosaur. And the Carnosaur was basically like, if you imagine a T-Rex, the biggest T-Rex we've ever seen, like really, really big. And then on top of that, it had a, a, lizard, a lizard man, a, a soldier on top of him, that he is basically a beast master that just kind of like just orders him around and all that stuff. I set up the base for this one Carnosaur. So I never had a chance to kind of finish them off properly, the Carnosaurs. Um, but I kind of just set up the, the, the broad strokes of the animal and then David came along and just made him really, really shine. This faction, the Lizard Man, it's actually really loved by the fans and I understand why. They look so unique and they're actually so fun to play with and we had equally as much fun doing them as people have playing them. And the reason why we had to leave is because dice came knocking. Basically, because we had a child at this point, because the child was very, very young, to me, dice is one of the biggest studios in the world in terms of work and how much of a difference you can make. But also, uh, Sweden is a perfect country to live in. So this is why I decided to leave Creative Assembly at that point and then move to dice and start working there. Yeah, I am doing it, doing it. I've put in the Battlefield stuff first because I actually didn't work as much in Battlefield as I did in Battlefront. So Battlefield 5, I actually was just hopping out. So what you can see here is just a weapon that DICE was kind enough to kind of allow me to uh, animate. It's kind of a rare weapon, so it was an additional weapon that was released not long ago. The thing that I found more interesting with animating this weapon, it was the how the weapon loads. So it has like this max strip that actually loads down. So it was really fun to actually animate the weapon and then just having that tension there for a little bit and then drive it all the way down. There's people at DICE that know so much about weapons, the history of weapons, how they work mechanically. So in this case, we rely heavily on the knowledge of certain people that actually know a lot about weapons to ask them specifically, would you hold the weapon like this? Would you reload the weapon like this? Some of that stuff is stuff that we keep in mind when we animate because the weapon needs to be as realistic as possible. So uh, that was the one contribution in terms of weapons that I did. I worked on many other things, bits and bobs, but the game that I spent most of my time at DICE has been Battlefront. When I started working on Battlefront, I kind of touched up in a few heroes that needed some loving here and there, but the hero that I actually worked from scratch in order to kind of just get him out the ground and making him look as good as possible was Maul. And Maul was an interesting challenge because he, he is a mix of motion capture and hand key because motion capture doesn't really cut it for Maul. So uh, having Maul feeling nervous, having Maul feeling like he's always searching for the next target and just he's always anxious in trying to actually just chop some stuff up required for us to massage the mocap quite a bit and also add some hand key on top in order to get him to be like really really cool so the stuff that you see on the show reel the, the way he attacks when he's fighting another jedi or he's attacking a trooper how he combos and, and how he connects his attacks uh, it was really really tough working with the timings and the speed of the character. After Maul, you have Dooku. And Dooku, for me, was such an interesting character to work with because he is almost the complete opposite of Maul. When I went to Battlefield, worked on Battlefield, came back to Battlefront live service, the first thing that I did was actually work on Dooku. So I was keen to get my hands on a hero again. Having Dooku being the complete opposite of Maul, this character that is very much contained, this character that very much knows exactly what he does at all times, never gets nervous, very precise with his style. It was a, a great challenge for me. And also uh, Dooku has another layer of interest to me because in the movies, he's not an interesting character. 
uh, to me at least, he never feels interesting. So for Dooku not to be a character that just sits in the main menu and you just go past him when you're trying to select the cool characters like Kylo or Maul, then maybe I had to actually make him as exciting as possible, right? So for me, making Dooku an exciting character that is also true to the movies was an amazing challenge. After much back and forth, I think we actually managed to get him in a really, really good place. He looks very much contained all the time. He looks very much like a wise person that is there and he never gets hot-headed. He's always cool. Even when you play him, I feel like we actually got that vibe, that, that energy quite right. So if you put Maul and Dooku together, I think the energies are very different. I'm really happy about that. And I'm also happy to be working on Battlefront. Our community is really, really tight and it's an amazing community. The game is getting a lot of love lately and we're about to release the Droidicus as well. So it's kind of like a great, great Star Wars fest in Battlefront. So I highly recommend you guys to go check it out. If you guys have any feedback, then please feel free to reach out to me, uh, reach out to Ben Walk as well, the community manager. We always love to hear from the people that play our game. And uh, if not, then leave a comment down below and I'll also answer the questions that you might have about any of these games here. It's no problem. So with that, we concluded the showreel. So as always, we get to the end of another episode. Showreel, this industry is very much fast moving and whenever I actually find myself needing a new showreel, it's always something that I put together really quickly. So my showreel that I sent to a company will most likely look like this one, even though it's not super incredibly pretty, it just goes straight to the point and it shows the work that I've done and how good I've done it and that's about it. Um, but I highly recommend if you're gonna do a showreel to actually make it a bit more presentable than this and also uh, use some kind of chronological way of showing your work. Uh, make sure that if you can show work of in-game and also in Maya but overall, just make sure that your showreel is sturdy, is solid, and is not longer than maybe three to five minutes. So make sure you put your best work right at the beginning and right at the end. Make sure that your showreel says, this guy has fun when he works. If people can see that, they can relate to that, and you most likely get the job. So make sure that the fun resonates on your showreel. And that's all I had for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoy it. Do leave comments down below about what you guys think about the work, about the games, if you played some of the games, what do you think about the games? And then most importantly, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, then please do hit the bell notification to make sure that you actually get the latest videos straight in your YouTube main page as soon as I release them. And if you made it all this way, thank you very much for staying with me all the way to the end. I shall see you guys in a week's time. And until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.